At a construction site, Clint enters his office to call his pretty wife, Jonah. He tells her that he's going to miss her since she's going off to work during the weekends. Jonah, on the other hand, doesn't seem too pleased with him. After the call, she goes out to get the mail while her husband's dog keeps barking in the background. Back at the office, Clint attends to a visitor who has come to offer him a good deal for his business. Later that day, Clint is driving down the road when he gets stopped by the local sheriff, Sam. Sam asks Clint if he can go fishing with him during the weekends, and since Jonah will be going away for the weekend, he accepts the sheriff's offer. Clint arrives home and sets his dog, Duke, free before joining Jonah, and Jonah is still wearing that displeased look on her face. She doesn't even prepare dinner for Clint and tells him that she's late for her appointment with the doctor. The duo starts talking, and Clint tells her about the client who came to offer a million and a half for his business earlier today, but Clint turned him down. This agitates Jonah, and she begins to express how she wants to live in the city instead of being caged up in the house like a rat in a maze. This leads to a small argument, with Clint reminding her that he built this house just so that they could settle and have kids. However, luck doesn't seem to be on their side with having a kid. Clint, on the other hand, is patient, and his love for Jonah is quite sufficient. Jonah, however, wants the money and to go back to New York. Jonah leaves the house angry, while Clint is left with his thoughts. Later that weekend, Clint goes fishing with Sam. During their fishing activity, Sam asks Clint how things are going with Joanna, and Clint starts to tell him everything, especially the part where Joanna craves the city life and not some quiet country house with kids running around. Meanwhile, it turns out that Joanna has been cheating on Clint with the local doctor, Cortland. Cortland tells her about a clinic deal that he got and how they're soon to be living their best life in the city. One problem though, Clint can't be in the picture. Joanna offers to get a divorce, but Cortland Cortland would rather she get rid of him permanently. He pulls out a vial that contains toxins from the ovaries of one of his exotic fish and tells her that she just needs to put it in his food. The toxin will then make it look like Clint passed from a heart attack. Joanna is hesitant at first and decides that she can't do it. When she's finally about to leave, Cortland slips it into her bag and tries to convince her to rethink it one last time. She returns to her house and empties her purse looking for the bottle. This causes the vial to fall out and start leaking. At first, she considers poisoning Clint, but she gives up and tosses it in the trash can. Clint later gets back home to meet Joanna, making dinner. He then kisses her and tells her he'll be working at the workshop. However, the noise from the workshop starts to irritate Joanna while she's trying to enjoy her wine and cooking. Angrily, she goes back to get what's left of the toxin and empties it into another glass of wine. Just then, Clint comes in and startles her, but he didn't notice the vial which she flung out of fear. Instead, he grabs both wine glasses and helps her set the table. While they're eating, Joanna is scared to take a sip from her wine cup because because now, she doesn't know which of the cups has the poison in it. Clint then proposes a toast, causing her to panic and lie that she isn't feeling too well. Clint then takes a sip from the wine cup after managing to get Joanna to make a toast with him. But just then, Clint starts to convulse, and it dawns on Joanna that Clint has the right cup. As he struggles in pain, he tries to reach out to Joanna, but she tells him to just end his life, and to his greatest surprise, heartbreak and a heart attack. Nicely done, Joanna. Clint finally stops fighting and slumps to the the ground. Jonna then rushes and calls Cortland, who tells her that he will take it from there. That night, Sam is with the coroner and Cortland to retrieve the body and discuss burial matters, while Jonah sits there pretending to grieve. Sam tells Cortland that he wants an autopsy done, as he is suspicious of Clint's death. I mean, they went fishing together, and Clint looked perfectly fine to him. Cortland tells him that an autopsy might not be needed, and notices the vial on the floor, just in front of the sheriff's legs. He panics at first, and signals Jonah, but all they can do is remain calm until the sheriff leaves without noticing the vial. After the sheriff Sheriff leaves, he hurriedly picks up the vial and asks Jona if she wishes to give him a heart attack too. But they're both successful with their diabolical plan, and Clint's body is taken to the refrigeration room. That night, we see that Clint might still just be alive, or maybe something demonic is cooking up as Clint's head turns to the other side while in the refrigeration room. The next morning, Clint's body is taken out by the morticians to prepare the body for a funeral. Just then, the coroner gets a call from Cortland, telling him that Jonah has requested a quick funeral and doesn't want anything too expensive. Meanwhile, the morticians are about to begin the embalmment process when the coroner comes to inform them that they'll be going cheap. This meant no embalmment, and they had to use an old coffin that would be polished to bury the body. 
On the day of the funeral, Duke isn't having it with Jonah's pretense and keeps barking at her as she approaches the coffin. She even puts on a little show by crying and pretending to be in pain. Later that night, Jonah is seen in a tub with Cortland, both laughing over Jonah's acting and how they successfully took out Clint. Meanwhile, Duke is still barking uncontrollably while it is raining cats and dogs outside. Jonah gets fed up with him, so she leaves the tub and grabs a gun while Cortland follows curiously. On reaching Duke's cage, she shoots open the lock and tries to shoot him, but he escapes. Then Cortland calls her crazy as they laugh and return to the house. Duke, on the other hand, scurries back to the cemetery where his own is buried and lies beside the grave. Meanwhile, the rain causes the soil to become loose and slowly starts seeping into the coffin, causing Clint to wake up. He is petrified and confused at first and struggles to get out, but the shabby coffin starts to fall apart, allowing him to punch through it and reach out of the soil. Duke sees this and is scared at first, but he remains at a safe distance barking while his owner manages to get himself out of the grave. Duke then greets him before he staggers back to his home with his bruised hands. On reaching the house, he finds that the door is locked, so he goes to the kitchen window, where he sees Jonah kissing Cortland. And for a split second, Jonah caught a glimpse of someone at the window, but that someone was quick to dive out of view. Jonah expresses her worries to Cortland, who goes to the window to check, but he tells her that the dog is back. She then laughs it off, but still has that worry at the back of her head. That night, after Cortland leaves for work, Clint breaks into the basement, where he spends the rest of the night away from the rain and the cold. The following day, Jonah meets up with Clint's lawyer to find out about Clint's properties, which she will now be taking over. She also offers to sell the business for a million and a half dollars, but on the condition that it will be paid in cash and in 48 hours. Meanwhile, Clint wakes up in the basement and finally heads upstairs to the kitchen. He drinks some water and takes a bite out of the food in the fridge before realizing that Jonah is on her way back home. He then returns to the basement to grab a gun and some ammo, but due to his injuries, he drops the ammo and and struggles to pick at least one up. After managing to load a bullet in the gun, he heads upstairs to shoot Jonah. Meanwhile, Jonah enters the kitchen and notices that the fridge has been left open. She shuts it and goes to freshen up. Clint, on the other hand, follows her and is about to shoot when she gets saved by the bell. Jonah goes to get the door and sees Sheriff Sam, who has come to check up on her. She tells him to come in and offers him a drink. While he's drinking, he tells her that he heard she's selling the business and the house. Jonah manages to hide her panic and tells him that she doesn't know a single thing about running a business and that there are too many memories in the house for her to keep staying there. Afterwards, she sees Sam off and Cortland is just arriving. Cortland then covers up by saying that he has come to check up on his patient. They both head in as Sam leaves and Jonah immediately tells Cortland that they have to leave as she fears that the sheriff might be onto them. Cortland, however, tells her that they have until tomorrow to get the money and that they'll leave immediately after. Clint, on the other hand, realizes that he had loaded only one one bullet and goes back to load another so he can end Cortland as well. On returning, Clint overhears Cortland and Jonah talking about how she had been pregnant, but he had helped her with the abortion process so she won't have to spend her life with Clint. Clint gets gravely hurt by hearing this, and instead, he takes out the bullets saying that using a gun will be too easy. Now we're talking. That night, Clint waits for Jonah to fall asleep before grabbing a pair of scissors and heading into the bathroom. He tends to his wounds, washes up and gets a change of clothes before leaving leaving. The next morning, the clients arrive at the house with a briefcase full of cash to seal the deal after selling off Clint's business. After the men leave, Jonah is super excited and ready to leave the moment Cortland returns home. Meanwhile, Sheriff Sam arrives at the cemetery, where he meets the coroner and the mortician over Clint's empty grave. The mortician claims he saw it like that this morning, and the coroner is worried that this could be bad for his name. He also believes that someone has dug Clint out, but wishes that the case be kept a secret. Sam then asks them to take the coffin to his house and to not say a word about it to anybody until he has carried out his investigations. Back at Clint's house, Jonah rejoices for her newly found wealth. She heads to the bathroom to wash up, but is shocked to find the place a mess. She quickly locks the door, realizing that she is not alone. After calming herself down, she grabs a weapon and heads out to the room to call Cortland. However, Cortland doesn't pick up the phone, so she leaves a voice message asking him to come home immediately and that someone might be in the house. She then heads to the basement where she grabs the gun, but she encounters Duke and starts to slowly back up into the basement. She then 
tries to shoot Duke, but Clint sneaks up on her wearing a welder's mask. Out of shock, she fires the gun at him, but it sends her flying into the basement. Clint then locks her up while she lies on the floor unconscious. He then goes around the house to seal the windows and any possible exits. Meanwhile, Cortland is just about done with work. He takes another one of his fish and extracts the toxins from the fish before listening to his voicemails, but he only stays long enough to hear the first message warning him to pay up his six months to rent or he will be forced out of his property. When he leaves, Jonna's message begins to play, but sadly, no one except us is listening. Cortland returns home, takes out the syringe, and then begins to call out to Jonah, who doesn't answer. He looks for her around the house and finds the briefcase with the money, but still no signs of Jonah. Meanwhile, Jonah wakes up and hears Cortland calling to her. She thinks that Cortland is the one who snuck up on her and tries to get rid of her, so she hides. Clint then opens the basement door so Cortland can find her. But when Cortland enters the basement, Jonah attacks him with a rod, causing him to drop the poison, which roils off to a corner. She makes a run for it with the briefcase, but Clint shows up and locks them both in. Now she is certain that there's a third person and regrets having hit Cortland in the head. As he regains consciousness, John apologizes for hitting him and explains that she had thought he was the one who tried to attack her. Of course, she doesn't know about the sirens yet. Cortland then starts to pretend, saying that Jonah doesn't love him and would dare to think that he would hurt her. He then offers to burn all the money to prove his love to her. Convinced by this, Jonah apologizes deeply and tells him she loves him. While this is going on, they can hear Clint moving furniture around. Cortland tells her that they have to get out first, so he tries shooting the lock open, but realizes that Clint has messed with the ammo, leaving only gunpowder in air. He then attempts to break through the sealed window, which is successful. But as he approaches it, Duke sticks his head in, barking, leaving the duo trapped in the basement. Back upstairs, Clint is busy remodeling the house and tearing through the walls in anger. He even saws through his wedding photos, telling Joanna that he could always remodel the house since she didn't like it. The next day, Jonah wakes up to Cortland telling her that he suspects that it is the sheriff who's doing this to them so he can have a share of the wealth. As Cortland expresses his rage, Jonah notices the syringe filled with poison lying on the floor. She picks it up and confronts Cortland about his love one last time. Realizing that he's been using her all this while, she attacks him but fails to inject him. He eventually gets his hands on the syringe and attempts to end her, but suddenly, the basement door opens and Cortland would rather not waste the dose on her. But on whoever is playing this prank with them. Cortland then grabs the briefcase while Jonah follows him. As they arrive outside the basement, they realize that the house has been remodeled with wood. They try to navigate their way through the maze but encounter multiple dead ends. Eventually, they get separated and Cortland is faced with their host first. He tries to make a deal with Clint but only approaches him hoping to subdue him with the poison. However, when he realizes that the person messing with them is Clint, he passes out and lands on the poison. Clint then proceeds to go out after Jonah. He chases her into a small hole that leads her to a wooden coffin. As she pleads to be saved, Clint then reminds her of how she said she felt like a rat in a maze. He also asks to know if their child was a boy or a girl, but what does it matter? He then pushes Cortland into the coffin with her and seals them in. Afterwards, burns the building and drives off with Duke and the duo inside the coffin. Meanwhile, Sam, who is uneasy about Clint's case, goes down to the basement where Clint's coffin is kept. After taking a long look, he realizes realizes that Clint had escaped by himself. He heads straight to Clint's house, but finds it burning and calls the fire department. The following morning, he returns to Clint's grave to find a man standing there with a shovel. He tells the man that he's visiting a friend who died last week. After realizing that the man is Clint, Sam tells him to leave and never return, obliquely promising to keep this a secret. As Clint drives away with Duke, we see that Joanna is still alive with the lifeless Cortland and all the money buried with her in Clint's grave. Joanna then screams helplessly for help, but I wonder who's coming to save her. And this is the end. This was a recap of the 1990 movie Buried Alive by Frank Darabont and starring Tim Matheson, Jennifer Jason Lee, William Atherton, and Hoyt Axton. So who else thought Joanna got what she deserved? Let us know in the comments below with hashtag cinema recap. Until next time.